kitchen. I'm, I've just um, turned pretty silly because I love Christmas, as you can see. Hope you like my hats. I'm going to show you how to ice a Christmas cake perfectly. Ice, ice, baby. So I've got some fruit cake here. It's an amazing recipe, um, if I do say so myself. It's available in all of my books, but also I've popped it down there for you. Um, I've been doing it for years. It's full of loads of fruit and brandy and vodka. And not that, not as deep as a normal cake. And look what's happened to this one. I've sort of stored it and it's kind of got a bit squashed. So I've got to turn this into a really nice looking iced Christmas cake. But if you can do, do it with this, you can do it with any cake. So this is an eight inch cake. You need to work with an eight inch cake drum. Oh, that's my oven going off or something from before. Sometimes what I do is I stick two together. So it's just gonna give it a bit more height. So I'm gonna take some marzipan and some apricot jam. And I'm gonna just mask this cake first of all. So a little bit of jam on the board. Just pop it on come down at eye level and I can see already it's not level work on it at this stage it's going to make the actual icing so much quicker and easier so it's worth spending the time on I'm going to make a bit of a clonk to fit my cake um, so I'm going to have it round there just shape it off a bit there we go so now I've gone way too much but what I can do is I can push this down so press that down and I'm keeping coming down at eye level to have a look and see is it level push it a bit more so yeah that's kind of about level obviously it's a bit lumpy on the top but we're going to sort that out and this is what we call plugging in the in the world of cakes so you're plugging all the lumps of the holes and the cracks so i'm just going to use my fingers just to push that in that's oh, someone's been sat on that i don't know why. so now this is a big problem here you can see so i'm going to need to build this out before i do the first layer and it's always best just to do this underneath the marzipans. I'm going to need quite a big clonk. I want to have a nice flat top and nice round sides. Um, so I'm going to build this out just so it comes in level with um, the baseboard. And it's really easy to work with marzipan. It's really easy to mould. And actually even this bit round here that's got a bit of a dodgy sort of curve so I'm going to add a little bit to that as well. Just like that. And when I cover this with the next layer of marzipan any sort of excess here and then I can start to chop it down so it's best to kind of build up a bit more than you need. The other thing to look at before you go over with your first coating of marzipan, um, is there any sort of lumps or bumps or holes where you've had a monster raisin that's kind of biffed off in the wrapper because once you go over it with the marzipan you will get sort of little lumps and undulations so if you really want to be like fussy about it you can just add any kind of like bits of marzipan to any big holes. Again, it doesn't matter. If you're really decorating your cake with loads and loads of different different things, you might not need such a perfect coating, but if you're going for a really clean finish, then yeah, just have a look round, see if there's anything like obvious, any sort of gaps you need to fill. That that should work. So now I'm going to cover the whole piece, the whole cake in apricot jam. Get a little bit of paper. So I've got some apricot jam that I've just boiled, just boiled it to the boil with a tiny bit of water. I'm just gonna go all the way around the top of the cake and the sides. But I'm also going to go right over that those two drums because I'm going to cover the whole cake and the drums are going to be hidden. Got some guide sticks. I love using these. These are brilliant. I use them for um, cookie baking, um, any type of cake decorating. They're only about two pounds. Just get them online. But they're really good because it's going to mean that my marzipan's all one thickness. I'm just going to knead it together now just to make it pliable. You need to be the boss of the marzipan. It can't be the boss of you. So that's kind of getting there. So now I'm going to get a bit of icing sugar and just dust my surface. It will dry the marzipan out if I put too much in. Just roll it into a bit of a fat sausage, press it down and start to roll it out. Just get my measuring pin. Oh, hello! <laughs> you didn't expect that, did you? Hello, Mr. Rolling Pin. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> I can just see George cringing. Just give it a twist. Make sure you're always giving it a quarter turn. I've got a little bit of icing sugar from the top, but not too much, otherwise we're gonna get that cracking. So we're pretty much there. So I wanna make sure that this is big enough for my cake before I lift it over and put it on. So top tip, just kind of use your rolling pin as a guide. And I know that I need my piece of marzipan to be about that big all the way around. So I can see it's gonna be a bit short on that side. So I'm gonna just thin it out a little bit more. Quite hard work actually, I'm happy with that. So a good idea before you put it onto your cake, something I like to do, side smoothers, top smoother. So I'm going to polish that just so there's no kind of undulations from my rolling pin. Take the rolling pin and just roll it over there. Now I'm just going to get my cake. 
And now I'm going to lift up my marzipan. pan. I'm going to get it right centered so I've got the equal amounts either side of my cake. And I can see on this side I've got enough to cover right across to the boards. So now I can just roll away and that should be perfect all the way around. Top smoother and just roll it over the top so you can already see how this is looking quite flat already. I'm pressing it against the sides, I'm not dragging it down. It looks like I'm dragging it down, but if I do that, I'm gonna get tears around here. So I'm kind of more like sort of lifting and pressing it against rather than pulling it down. You want to try and avoid any creases if you can. It's not the end of the world if you get a few small ones around the bottom, so we're gonna put ribbon or something around there like that. We just need to trim off the excess. So I'm just gonna go all the way around the edge. I'm doing this because when I lift it up, I don't want the weight to be very heavy. So it tears on the sides. So I'm just getting a little bit of the excess off, so I'm leaving myself about a couple of centimetres all the way around. This is the um, trick to getting a really good cake covering. I'm going to lift up my cake. So I've got those drums under there so I can do that, I can hold it up. Side smoother. I'm pressing it against the side, so what I'm doing now is just checking that I haven't got any gaps anywhere and I'm starting to kind of like work over, pressing all of the marzipan underneath that I've sort of built up. At this stage you can work creases out with the icing, the sugar paste, you really want to uh, avoid any creases. So just get the best coating you can at this layer. So I'm just going to trim off all the way. I'm using my um, knife against the drum, so I'm kind of I'm using that as a guide. And what it started out like, it's looking pretty good so far. So now I'm gonna work on it with my smoothers. So there's my cake turntable. Turn I always work on a cake drum as well because it's easier for me to kind of leave my cake to dry overnight and I can move it about. A bit of icing sugar. Do I need to use my top smoother anymore? It's pretty good. So I'm just using my palm just to kind of smooth over the top edge and that's just going to push any marzipan, any lumps and bumps into the fruit cake. And now I've still got some lumpy and bumpy sides so I'm going to take my pair of side smoothers. This is why you need two because you need to have one straight edge one to hold against the cake and the board. And then this one I'm looking between because I don't want to have any lumps and bumps. I don't want any A-line cakes that look like Daleks or any concave ones, I'm keeping it completely straight. So as long as you hold them in the right way, you're gonna kind of get a nice finish. So I can already see here, I've got a bit too much marzipan here. So again, by eye, I'm just trimming it down so I've got completely straight. Let's kind of like trim away at this point. And then I can go around with my smoother. I've got a little bit of a lump going on here. That's where I really built it up, so I might have to trim it away a bit. Where that kind of goes in a bit there, I'm just going to build it up a tiny bit. Make sure that shape is right. But marzipan's quite forgiving, you can really work with it. And what we're doing is getting it flawless so that when we get that white sugar paste on, it's going to look really straight. And when you are happy with it, when you're completely 100% happy, take it away, leave it to set overnight. That marzipan is going to harden off and it's going to go nice and firm so that when we come back the next day and put the sugar paste on, it's gonna be nice and dry and it's gonna be quite firm so that when we go over, it's gonna keep a really nice shape. We've made one yesterday, so I'm gonna, this is nice and firm now and it's nice and dry. So I'm now gonna be able to cover it with my white sugar paste and get me flawless finish. The first thing I'm gonna do is prepare my cake. I'm gonna cover it in white sugar paste and when you're working with white sugar paste, it does dry out really quickly. So again, get Mr. Cake ready. Just for, I'm jing jingling all the way and lift that off the board. I'm going to put that on there ready for my brandy. It's Christmas after all. Cheers. Any type of spirit you want really. Grand Monia might be quite nice or you can even use vodka if you want to. So I'm going to go all the way over my, making sure I go all around the top and right down to the bottom. What we're doing essentially is exactly what we did for the marzipan second coating. We're going to roll it out and cover it. But hopefully with this one, it should be a lot easier because we've already kind of like got a nice good base to work on. So I've got a kilo here, which will do, will do an eight inch cake easily and you have a bit of excess. Get it into its sausage, flatten it down. Plenty of icing sugar on the surface again. Guide sticks if you've got them. When you're rolling out sugar paste or marzipan, if you're quite new to it, sometimes you might find you end up with all those spidery leg bits going off. So a good tip is to always put your pin back in the middle of the piece of marzipan or sugar paste and go away from you and then bring it back and towards you rather than just kind of going like that and that will kind of help you to get a good 
nice circle. Again, make sure you're quarter turning it. Plenty of icing sugar underneath. Top smoother just to polish it off on the surface. Roll it onto my pin. Now doing this, you do get a bit of a line, but you can smooth it out afterwards. Lift it off the paper, wash it on, keeping it close to the cake so you don't trap any air bubbles. There you go, look at that. Top smoother, and you can be really quite firm with it. That's the thing, sometimes people are a bit too scared of their cakes. They're like, oh no, just being really gentle. Marzi Pound Sugar Paste is quite substantial. And now just round the edges, just coming all the way down. I'm just gonna have enough at this side here, but just enough to spare. When I get my side smoother on the side, that'll bring it down. Probably weighing a good four or five kilos, I'd say. That's why I've got my big muscles. So, side smoother. See that bit where I didn't have quite enough? I just biff that down there with my smoother. You can, you know, you've got quite a lot to play with. It's quite a thick coating. Cut off the excess the same way we did before. There we go. So that's all nice and neat around the bottom. So that's a good thing as well. You want it really nice and neat around the bottom because you're going to put ribbon around it. You might be piping with it. I'm going to use my smoothers now. I'm going to get my turntable. So you can see that's kind of nice and flat now. If you think about what we started with, that was so uneven. Smoothing it around the top just to make it as neat as I can. Coming back at eye level. I'm pressing quite firmly against it. I'm looking in between. Just check, you know, have a look. Do you need to trim off any little bit around the bottom? Just double check it's all good. And when you're happy with it, leave that to dry overnight. And then you're ready to decorate it the next day. Always leave it to dry as well, is another point to say, because if you're piping on it, if you're adding any type of decoration, you do a mistake. If you've left it to dry overnight, um, it's really easy to take off the mistakes. If you go over it now with a dark coloured icing or anything, you're going to stain it, so just leave it. Yeah, well, I could play with these forever, you see. But yeah, that's done. There we go. Nice and dry. The reason we've done that as well is because once we want to decorate it, we want it to be nice and skinned over, so if we make a mistake, we can take it off. So I've got a couple of ribbons here, um, and I like to do two and sort of overlay them. Just get the size you need. Just trim that off. And I'm going to overlay it with a bit of green. I think it just adds a really nice element, a bit more of a kind of fun element with no effort. Turn it round, choose your favourite bit at the front. So that's quite, mm, this is a nice bit. So I'm just going to add a little bit of icing now just to stick my ribbon on. I've just got some royal icing here. And then pop my ribbon on. So press it against the cake. Make sure it's completely flush to the board. There we go. And then same again with the second one, so a bit more icing over there. And then wrap that around. And then just securing it again, a bit more icing. And again, as I say, you're not going to see that bit because that's the back of your cake. So there you go, how nice does that look? So you could decorate it any way you want now, you could just put some foliage on there or anything. But if you come back next week, I'm going to show you how to decorate it. It's going to be really fun. If you like what you see, please subscribe and everything you need to do this is down there. I'll see you, see you next week. Mm -hmm.